drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm filled to what I'm gonna drink. Hi, and welcome to my Belgian Blonde Ale Grandfather Brew. So, as you probably noticed, I now have an introduction to my videos. Took a little while to come up with that. Uh, hopefully you all like it. Do let me know. So, without further ado, here is the recipe for today's brew. So, this one is actually uh, a Leffe Blonde styled type of beer. Uh, and as you can probably notice here from the uh, mash... Uh, temperatures it's a little bit different. If you want to make a very close clone to the Leffer then consider using White Labs 530. Here's the label that I'll be going for for this beer. I know that it is really strictly speaking a uh, Belgian beer but uh, I am brewing it in Norway so it's become a Norwegian blonde. So we pick up the brew I've added all of the grain to the grain basket and I'm just giving it those final stirs just to make sure that all those grains are nicely wet and everything's ready for the mash. So now on goes the mash plate and I'm pushing that all the way to the grain and then lifting it up a bit. I find this gives an increased efficiency. Then finally on goes the mash pipe and then my trusty sink strainer which basically keeps loose grain from going back into my wall. Very handy. So onto the mash and as you can see from the schedule here this is a very simple two set mash. Particularly simple when you consider that this is a Belgian beer which uh, usually have a minimum of three mash steps. Mashing at 70 degrees C for 60 minutes will give us a heavy bodied beer uh, with quite a bit of residual sweetness in it. You could, if you so wished though, obviously uh, mash this at a different temperature to give a different effect. It really depends what you're looking for. So, while I'm waiting for uh, this to mash, I'm having a little bit of fun breaking up my candy sugar. I'm not doing this just for fun of course, it is uh, very helpful if you add the sugar in uh, smaller pieces uh, to your boil, uh, it will of course uh, dissolve down much quicker. Now that's done, I've also prepared my hops uh, and everything else that I need during the boil here. Not that I'll be boiling my yeast here uh, of course, and here's a closer look at what I'm using here today. So it's now time for the sparge and I'm using a one litre jug and the grandfather version of basically a tea urn um, in order to do this. For those that are interested, here's a quick look at uh, the music for today, Therapy Trouble Gum, an oldie but a classic. So with the sparge now over, it's now time for my uh, plastic bag trick, and there you have it. All the grain in the bag, ready for easy disposal. So we're just coming up to the hot break now, so I'm getting ready to stir it all in. Uh, you will find that with the grain father, even though it says 99 degrees C, uh, chances are that is boiling. And as you can see, there it is, the hot break. So it's now important to stir all this back into itself and um, you know wait until this is all done before adding your first hop addition so most of that foam is now gone so i'm adding the first hop addition and this is when i actually start the timing of the boil it's important every time that you add an addition during brewing that you then give it a nice stirring so it's now time to add the candy sugar almost and what i've done here is i've added some fresh uh, boiled wort directly to the sugar and give it a nice stir just to break it up and give it a, a bit of an extra um, time to dissolve before it hits the uh, grain father. So in it goes now and it's important to give this a really good stir making sure that you stir from the bottom first in order to break everything up. It's now about 10 minutes till the end of the boil and what I've done is I've attached the counterflow chiller. The reason for this is quite simple. It takes some minutes to actually sterilise the counterflow chiller and I don't want that to alter my boil time. 
So depending on what the late additions are to the beer would it really depend on when I add the counterflow chiller. Be mindful though that with the lid on you can quite easily have a boil over. As you can see from this video I got pretty close here. So I've now chilled down my wort sufficiently so that I can pitch my yeast and it's now time to put this into a fermentation vessel. I've made some modifications to my setup and here you can see a Blickman through meter. This extends the wall out. I've obviously got the standard tap fitment there, giving the cold water in and hot water out. And then the next thing is I have a harness that comes directly from the ceiling, which then allows me to hands-free uh, take all of the wort into the fermentation vessel. I find using this wide funnel on top allows me to pitch the yeast without actually having to stop the pump at all. It works really, really nicely. Um, what I do do though is I uh, direct the wort just by moving the fermentation vessel and the uh, funnel around. It's best to have this when you have some pressure build up within the actual uh, container. You do this by simply having the funnel all the way in and then uh, once you've pitched the yeast you'll uh, be able to just lift the funnel up a little bit, releasing the pressure, and in goes all the wall. The footage that you see now is after I've lifted the funnel, which basically drains the whole thing out. I was very happy with the results from this brew day, and uh, look at that colour. Really, really stunning. So I've now got my small batch of beer into this uh, rather large fermentation vessel and it's also got a very large oversized spidal style airlock. I've attached a brew belt and I've also attached a uh, temperature controller and this one will start off at lower temperatures but I'll gradually ramp it up to about 26 degree adding one degree a day after the main fermentation has started to slow down. There's not really much to see with these oversized airlocks. Uh, even the most explosive of stouts really just gives this effect that you see here. But at least we know how we have a fermentation going on without actually having to open anything up. So, there you have it. I hope you did enjoy this video. I had a lot of fun making it and doing this brew. Um, if you did like this video, then it really helps me out if you could actually like it on YouTube. I've actually got an awful lot of different videos planned for the near future, so if you'd like to be uh, kept uh, up to date on those, then please subscribe. If any of you do have any ideas of uh, what you feel I should be doing in the future, uh, or if you have any questions or requests or anything like that, then please do let me know. Until then, happy brewing!